There we go. Whatever. I don't care. This is this is my Charlie. It's just this is what it is. Hey guys, what's going on? Okay, no, I'm not doing the voice. Well, let me fix the hair. Jesus Christ. I feel like I'm uh, dressing up like a mascot for a like a base like a like a sports team. I'm rooting. I'm rooting for a team at this point. It sucks that I'm not even gonna cut this video. I'm just gonna literally just upload this whole thing. So I gotta really get this thing going. All right, here we go. All right. All right, here we go, guys. All right. All right. So let's just get into it. Uh, Charlie just uploaded a one fucking hour video, one hour and fourteen minute video. He apparently had a full on conversation with Sneeko. I dressed up for the whole occasion. Let's just get into it. I'm going to hit play and then I'm going to just, you know, watch it. Let's go. I know it's April 1st, but I'm not fooling. The title is not a joke. I talked to Sneeko and I got to be honest, I had butterflies in my tummy. I was more excited to talk to him than I would be to talk to Santa Claus. Now, I know this will be coming as a shock to a lot of you, a bit of a jump scare. So I hope you're sitting down so it doesn't knock you off your feet. I am sitting down. Sneeko and I have not been on the best of terms recently. <laughs> We've tried our best to keep it a secret and handle it behind closed doors, but unfortunately, it's bled into the public eye, and you know what? By golly, I'll say it with my whole chest for all to hear. By golly. We just haven't liked each other. We haven't seen eye to eye on many things, so our internet beef has become this fine Wagyu steak. It's It's been this very tasty, juicy bit of drama between the two of us, and today, it finally boiled over and we had a conversation. And I want to show you some clips from it. He actually asked me to record, so don't think that this was some kind of one-party oh, consent shit. thing where I pulled the wool over his eyes and pulled his fucking pants down to surprise him with a recording. He had actually asked me to. And I want to show you how this went, because it was actually a very interesting conversation we had. Uh, I want to tell you how we got there. It's because uh, last night I noticed Sneeko was raving about cuties on Twitter yet again, <laughs> talking about how much he loves it and how he'll always defend it. That's weird. But then said that I wouldn't debate him on it. And this little nugget of cringe had me scratching the hair on my chin, confused. I wouldn't debate you on it. I would actually love to hear your side of things on how you could possibly excuse the blatant sexualization of the child actresses in the film. Eesh. Now, I'm not a debater. I actually am not a fan of debates in general. I prefer just general conversations as opposed to these, like, gotcha and uh, leading <laughs> questions and traps and shit. Right. I think that's not very conducive to actual understanding of different sides of arguments. So, I don't debate, but I was very willing to have this conversation with Sneeko, and I reached out to talk to him, and he was more than willing to talk about it. So we did. We talked about cuties, and even talked about all of our general grievances with each other. And this was a very different side of Sneeko. I went into this expecting him to be his standard, unhinged, like, very animated, cartoonish self that I see in all of his content on Twitter and Rumble, where he's doing these, like, temper tantrums and, like, throwing his ass in a circle and going Twitter, wild, hog wild. He blocked on Twitter? But here, this was a very laid-back, very calm and collected Sneeko, who was actually more than willing to concede on some of his actually, points, as well as see different sides of situations. And I didn't expect that. And I'm very appreciative of that pleasant surprise as well, because I went into this with pretty low expectations, okay. but after finishing our talk... I'm actually pretty curious to see where Sneeko goes next because, like I mentioned, there are some things that he just fully admitted, like maybe he was guilty of doing similar things that he criticized others for and that he was going to be repurposing his message and changing things around to make it more conducive to positivity. So overall, the whole conversation went in a totally different direction than I expected. Of course, he's still very passionate about some things and we still fought on quite a few things. And the reality is there's just a lot of things that I don't see eye to eye to him on with some of the things he talks about. But overall, I really walked away with a very different impression of Sneeko from this. Now, I know I'm blue blogging here, but one more thing that I think is important to mention, he has said that he's wanted to debate me over the last two weeks here. He even made this big hullabaloo on Twitter about how I ducked a debate with him on Aiden Ross' stream. Even though he had not replied to any of my DMs at that point, there was no debate scheduled between him and I. So that was just a blatant lie. I think he was just joking around about it and it missed the mark because people actually thought that I was avoiding him. But 
he's not wrong in the fact that I really didn't want to have a conversation with him over the last two weeks because all of it was extremely geared towards hurt feelings. At least that's how I interpreted it, a lot of his statements. It seemed to focus more on me saying, P.U., you stink, and him taking it as, he's canceling me, canceling me. There's not a whole lot of productive conversation that can come from that with me just explaining over and over again that I'm just insulting you, and that's the simple brass tacks of it. But over the last 48 hours, it really does feel like he's had this come-to-Jesus moment where he's recognized that I was never canceling him. I was making fun of him. He even issued an apology about bringing up my girlfriend and stuff like that. And has recognized that he has been off the mark on a lot of things recently as wow. well. He also, like, apologized Maturity. for being a cuck, which was a wild thing. He talked about how cuckoldry was a mistake. So it looks like he was never okay with it, even right. though for a time he did say everyone should Get try it. This. It looks like he's changed his what perspective on here? that and now looks back on it with a lot of regret. Which isn't surprising since those insults were not some of his favorite to keep hearing. So that's not really a discussion we had. Uh, I think and have always said, whatever happens between consenting adults in the bedroom is fine. As long as no one's getting fucking hurt, there's no like victims, it's consenting adults, you're good to do whatever makes you happiest. The reason I always talked about the cuckoldry is one, because fucking hilarious that a lot of his beliefs <laughs> now go very much against his past of being open to watching his girl get fucked in front of him by multiple men oh, on a couple occasions sakes. and two it was illustrating a bit of ridiculousness with him being the moral authority on healthy relationships when he himself was in a very confusing one that he wasn't proud of yet still preaching that people should do it anyway that was the whole point behind it i wasn't trying to kink shame like a lot of people started accusing me of if you want to be a cuckold, then be a proud one and be okay with it and oh comfortable God, in your own so skin about it. God dang. So, freaking it has seemed like he's been more thorough. receptive to real talk. This and is a that's what we have. So, let me go ahead and show you now. The first thing we talked about was cuties. Right. This discussion with you about cuties since I dropped that video back in 2020. <laughs> How time flies, man. Well, better late than never. So, have you seen the movie? Yeah, so uh, you mentioned you saw my video, so you know I didn't finish the movie. I physically couldn't. I found it just to be completely repulsive. Haven't you seen a lot of other movies that have repulsed you before? I watch horror movies. I watch movies that are provocative quite a bit. Yeah, but there's a. this is something I, I feel isn't being recognized. There's a difference between being repulsed by fiction, which is like horror movies, you know, that's not real, and being repulsed because there's real children doing sexual things. You can't fake that. The actresses were 11 to 13 years old. They were twerking. There was some very gross scenes in there, and like the door. cameras would zoom in on their chest and their ass and their crotch. Like, uh... that's a very different kind of repulse. That's what we agree on. I don't agree that those scenes are good. I don't agree with the sexualization of children. I defend the movie because I defend the morality of the movie. And I think that most people that were disgusted have seen those clips or didn't watch the whole movie uh, like you. So that movie was taken out of context quite a bit. And people don't really see the moral of the movie, which is defending Islamic values and also pointing out the very real problem that young girls have going on social media and doing these dances. I agree that it's disgusting. I agree that those scenes are repulsive, but I think you could be repulsed by TikTok and pretty much what young girls are doing on social media every single day as well. I think that people outraged at that film should also be outraged at everything that girls are doing now on Instagram, mm, TikTok, yeah, and all these like, apps. That doesn't just well, see. The, but here's the thing. So the, let's the let's movie. break it down to the very bare essentials. Can children consent? Can children consent? No, they can't. We agree. So then. So then why do you think it's excusable to exploit them after having them sign up for this film? Ugh, if they, this if you admit cringe. they can't consent, how can they possibly give the okay to be shaking their ass and having a camera all up in their shit while they're doing sexual things like that scene where she takes a picture of her vagina, the scene where they're doing literal, like, toying around with cam sites, like, oh, I'm gonna get that's very different. Like, no one is disputing the message, right? It's yeah, a mess. I, I agree with the intention of the movie. I don't think that yeah. those scenes are good. That's what we completely agree on. But I think that that was an important movie to point out how many people get sucked into this world. 
I think I think that was needed. That movie was needed needed to be made. And I also don't think that that movie encouraged pedophiles to go and incite and look at these girls. I think that they're more likely to go on TikTok and find girls that they're attracted to. I don't think that this really attracted oh, this people to these I, girls. This is a this is a, this is gonna this is harder than I thought it was gonna be to watch. I thought this was just gonna be like, oh god, why am I doing this? Ugh. Well, it's not like. It's not like I'm here arguing that this movie created pedophiles, right? But what it did is it delivered a film that they would watch for totally different reasons than the message. Again, the message isn't something that I or pretty much anyone has an issue with. The message is, like you mentioned, the social media poisoning them, making them do the sexual things, which is a problem. But this movie contributes to it since it still used real children to sexualize them to showcase it. That's the issue. You didn't I don't need think it to be children. I don't think it contributes to it because when you see girls doing this on TikTok, they don't know. I don't see girls doing it on TikTok, though, is the thing, right? The only people that would are going to be the pedophiles. They would go and search that out. This movie was advertised on Netflix. No, that's with... not true. Every time I, I don't have TikTok on my phone, but once in a while before I was banned, I would go on there. And the first three videos would be the same thing that you see on Cuties. It's the, it's, and that's why I uninstalled the app. That's why I refuse to have it on my phone because it's directing you to those to those images which is a problem i'm not disagreeing that's a problem but that doesn't make no, this we, film we, ag we agree but we just disagree that i think the movie was important to point out a flaw personally i never empathize with girls being attracted being directed to that site before i saw that movie that really made me understand what it's like to be a girl and grow up in that age <laughs> i think we're getting yes we agree that it is disgusting but you are excusing it because you believe it highlights a very real issue which it does but it contributes to that issue by using children they didn't have to use kids can like you recognize that right they could have no used... they didn't have no they didn't have to use kids but i also look at the director and i look at the moral of the movie and i don't think that it was anything unsafe and i don't think that the director had any bad intentions making it so maybe it shouldn't have been as sexualized but i defend the morality of the movie and i also defend the effect that it had on me when I watched that, that made me have a new perspective. But do you see why that's kind of... Jesus, sorry, that was my cat. Do you see why that's kind of concerning to hear, though? Because in the time that I watched that film, there were unreal amounts of sexual scenes. In fact, the majority of the movie was them doing, like, the dance... I feel like I gotta, I gotta get past this. I mean, I'm sure he... No, fuck it. Just watch the fucking thing routines where they're smacking each other's ass zoomed in on them shaking their ass in the camera there's that scene where a security guards like what are you girls doing here and they're like we're dancers you like prove it so they start twerking for him and he's like oh great get in here like that is a problem no matter how you spin it again the message is fine there was never anything wrong with the message and maybe the intention of the what, director what you, was how would you tell the director to convey the, the message in a different way you would just not use children. You could deliver the same message and you don't use children. The problem is that you- I don't think you... it would be effective. I don't think it would be as effective. Oh, it's so unfortunate that it's misinterpreted, but you couldn't be able to have that effect and show how provocative and how dangerous it is without using kids. Yeah, they, of but... course, the shots probably did not need to be that bad, but when I watched that, I was absolutely disgusted. And like I said, it, it changed my perspective. What's up, and what Hustle? I'm surprised about is that just you this are against shit wokeness right now. because everything that your content is about it doesn't seem like you've ever directed any energy am i mute i don't i'm not muted am i muted hello hello i think i'm i think i'm not muted it says you're not watching with vol with the uh, audio so maybe you can turn your audio on towards how dangerous wokeness can be which is exactly what that movie's about it's saying how important islamic values are in the face of wokeness it's about a Western African family, Islamic. They go to France, completely woke country that's now being burned alive and women are running around uh, topless. Wokeness has consumed France and it's pointing out a proper solution to this problem, which is my... embracing Islamic values. See what it... Who was the director of the film? Do you know? Her name is Maminu Dukure. Ma Maminu Dukure, I think that's her name. She's uh, a Western African woman and she moved to France. So I imagine that she had a very similar experience and she was trying to portray what it was like growing up. So the message of the movie... Wait, right, hold on. Let me just check real quick. I don't know if anybody will even get this far into the stream. I don't know if anybody will even get this far. Yeah, okay, the... it's on. Yeah, all right. 
is about social media and almost exclusively. She directed the film based on seeing some children in a neighborhood doing sexual dances and wondering how did it get to that point? This isn't okay. So the movie was supposed to be about how does a child get to that point? And it's about how <clears throat> social media is poisoning them and they're constantly comparing themselves. They're seeing these things. So they're putting on Hello. makeup and they're doing sexual shit. You can shit, hear me now? And they never really understand why or the consequences of it. it it's, it's not a, a critique on wokeness though. Of course, anything in the art field you can derive your own meaning from. I recognize that almost everything you encounter in life, you tie back to either cancellation or wokeness. But in this film in particular, this is a movie I really feel conflicts hard with your ideology. Under no circumstances should children be sexualized is where I stand. Do you disagree? <laughs> Hold There's on. There's a lot of things in movies. Hold on. That's, that's a... That's a that's a pretty softball question right there. That That's a <laughs> That's a pretty easy question to answer. <laughs> like I don't agree with incest in Star Wars, but Star Wars has incest scenes. I don't agree but that's with not incest, re- but it's portrayed. It's not real incest though. This is real children being sexualized. It's not fake. These are I agree, 11- agree. I agree agree. But I'm defending the point of the movie. You can defend the and point I, of the not, movie, well, but you can still condemn the movie itself. The point can stand on its own two feet, right? Like there this is a problem very that you recognize with kids being sexualized in specific on TikTok. That is a problem in and of itself. But you can still condemn this film for contributing to the thing it's supposed to speak out against, which is sexualizing children, which you have admitted it does, and it didn't need to, like you said. Oh, God. That is yeah, the so problem. Maybe they should have used child actors, but I agree with the point of the movie. But what do you? How do you think that the point could have been conveyed in a better way? You Not using use kids, eight, asshole. Use eighteen-year-olds to play eleven-year-olds. You don't have That's to. Exactly what most movies have done yeah. for a long time. A quick example is The Last of Us using Belly, Bella Ramsey to portray a, like a fourteen, fifteen-year-old. Like you can do that, and that's a lot more acceptable because there is no longer a victim. Like you'd said, children can't consent. These kids could never fully consent to being sexualized in this film like this on the big I would screen. Argue, I would argue that when they use 30-year-olds and 27-year-olds to play high schoolers like in Euphoria and like in 13 Reasons Why, it actually sexualizes kids more because we start to... Yo, this dude is on a losing streak right now. I don't know where the fuck he's going. I mean, I, I feel like... I don't feel like he's... I don't feel like he's trying to be weird i just feel like he just can't take the l and just go all right i was wrong so he's trying to defend a really weird point and it's very cringy it's very For cringy. Sure, high schoolers and we think of them in a different way people in their 30s and their late 20s get addicted to euphoria and they have ideas and they start romanticizing teenagers in a different way because they don't use actors in that way and they make them look more mature. this whole point is stupid that's a completely separate conversation you can make arguments for, but that doesn't work here because it sexualizes already real children. I can't right? believe so I'm it, streaming this. I think that's you're getting hung up on like the oh, what ifs and like what aboutisms on other sides, but the core <sighs> doesn't change. So let me give you an example. It, it it is realistic to use kids for the message, right? Because it's about kids. Well, what if the child was naked doing the vagina pick? If they showed oh, the God. kid's vagina, is that now too far? Oh, it's so Jesus. realistic. What is happening? So I might have to fucking stop the stream. I don't think I can do this. To be more effective and that people this is would not where I message. wanted to go with this. One, they could have used child actors and they should not have been sexualized in that way. Or two, they could have been 18 plus and it could have been sexualized, but then it wouldn't have been as effective. One of the two should have changed. I agree. Okay. So then do you think there's like levels to sexualization of kids that is acceptable and then unacceptable? No, this is never acceptable to sexualize children, but... Then, no. we, then we agree, so then can we then say, since this film sexualized children, I can't really champion the film. However, the message is okay. Like, I like the message. I agree completely. But I, the reason I defend that movie is because I think everybody just saw those scenes and looked past the message and looked past the good moral that... Oh the my god, dude, made. you're... They're, they're not getting it. The case for some people, right? That, you're 100%. not getting it. I would say it. most people. Most people who hate the movie haven't seen it. Most of the people accusing me of being a pedophile oh, for defending the movie haven't seen it. Have no idea what it's about. This guy's an idiot. Those scenes. But they're also still not wrong for being upset about those scenes. Like, can you recognize that? I think they that? should be more upset at the problem. I think people should direct that anger 
instead of calling me. Well, you can have you can you can you can be upset with multiple problems. You don't you can ha you can be upset with multiple things at the same time. You don't have to pick one thing to be upset about. <laughs> Pedophile on the internet. They should look at the system that turns these girls into sexual objects at a young age and be more angry at that. That is the real issue. That but is they, a bigger problem at, at large. They do, though. It's not mutually exclusive, like, where it's one or the other. Do they? The, do you? Do I what? Talk about the problem? Do you, do you direct that anger? I see you. Now, from here, we started branching off into other conversational topics, but I do want to go ahead and... Woof! Needed a little time out there. It's getting a little smoky in here. All that sneaky, sneaky, sneako crap that's coming out of this guy's mouth. Give a little wrap up here. After talking to him about it, it really feels like he sticks to his guns just out of pure stubbornness because he's defended it for so long he's unwilling to forfeit on the point, even though he can clearly recognize that the sexualization of children is a bad thing. And since the movie sexualizes children, it is full stop a bad thing. He can't separate the message and applaud the message without applauding the whole film, which is a problem. He repeatedly calls it his favorite movie and how important it is, but he's only referring to the intentions with the message, and the message is fine, but the film itself is not fine. It wanted to speak out against social media, poisoning these children and, and you know, having them do sexual things, and it's horrible. The, the film wanted to call that out and point a, point a light at how horrible it is, but doing so, they used real 11 to 13 year olds and actually sexualized them. Thus, it's a fucking horrible thing that they produced. And by my definition... I mean, that's fucking... Yeah, right. I think the fucking point here, if anyone's not catching on here, is that there is a fucking message that the movie was trying to portray, which is what Sneeko apparently appreciates, which is fair. It's, I appreciate it as well. But the way that they went about making the film was doing the thing that they were... They were condemning. They could have used adults, but they didn't use adults. They used children, which is the exact thing that they're fucking arguing. Definition and many people's definition is child porn that shouldn't be defended by any means. Now, right. I wish Sneeko would be able to just separate the message from the film. Because right. The message is fine. That yes. Is something that the you message is fine. Apply. We're okay with the That's message. The film itself follow the narrative that's popular on social media but all right hold on i gotta get prepped for this because like i have to like listening to this motherfucker talk is like listening to like a fucking garbage can shred it, it light, light itself on fire and i just sit there and watch it burn and not do anything about it all right here we go don't see you ever directed at the problem do you agree that wokeness is one of the biggest problems that corrupts kids nowadays define wokeness wokeness is the liberal ideology is feelings over facts. I identify this way because I feel like it is there's no gender, what? nothing matters, I do as I want, everything that's promoted on social media. What? Do you realize half of what you just described is how you've lived your life for the last year? Like feelings over facts, for example. You champion bullying. You you think bullying needs to come back. I have never canceled you. Can you recognize that? I've I have actually always spoke out this against the platforming if you've ever done This is fucking I don't even this is I I did this because I did this stream because I love drama. This is too much. This is so stupid that I don't think that I don't think the alcohol is killing my brain cells faster than this fucking video is. Noticed I spoke out against no, but it you with also disingenuous. When I called out the swordboard collage, you were like, these people just hurt my feelings. <sighs> Most of those people actively advocated one, one person nick is not green is the that's only person true. that's not true ethan klein celebrated and clapped when i was banned and said good finally this misogynist is banned what happens on the internet i understand it's good to have back and forth bullying is good because it makes you have to develop your character bullying is good the fuck is wrong with you someone needs to bully this asshole in a different way. That's not why I was upset. I was upset because a lot of these people were secretly happy or secretly hoping that I was going to get banned because they disagree with my ideology. But then why am I on that list when I've only ever spoke out against deplatforming? That seems like I'm there because I hurt your feelings. You didn't hurt my feelings. I thought it was funny because you do look like the rest of them. I, I don't... He looks like them. Just like 
I look like them because I look just like Charlie. Sneeko, do you hate me because I have my beautiful hair? You fucking asshole. Wow. I don't understand how, but we're not here to, to get into the nitty gritty, I guess. And after talking to Sneeko, it became clear that he really lives his life fearful of wokeness. He is constantly haunted by... It feels by so the good when he talks man, like with this whole screen. In Luigi's mansion, but every <sighs> ghost is woke. It's like taking a it's time out. It's one of those things where Insane. every topic we started Insanity. talking about always tied back to either cancellation or wokeness, which I think is pretty sad to be in that state of, I guess, unease, where he's always feeling as though woke is breathing down his neck it's haunting his dreams like freddy krueger but i'm gonna get into that in just a little bit more in a second i do want to mention that collage where he's wokeness to woke woke wokeness wokeness to people like this is just an excuse because they're dumb fucks and everyone hates them because they're they're idiots and their opinions are fucking stupid they could literally be like yo dude red ferraris suck i like white Ferraris and people would be like dude that's woke dude that's woke man and he'd be like oh man shit that's woke like this is some bullshit Sneeko is just a grifter in it. yeah exactly I, mean, it's not I don't even think he I think Sneeko is just a grifter he knows the incels I don't even think he's that smart I think he's one of the incels that has gotten caught up in the movement and is just kind of like spewing it i don't even think he's one of the the bad boys that is like that's like directing you know like doing the the directing the airplanes this guy is not directing airplanes this guy's not even driving an airplane this guy's a passenger in an airplane and he's just riding along and he just got he got a free first class ticket for some fucking reason that's the best fucking metaphor i could come up with that hurt his feelings it's people that like advocated for his cancellation and shit which again i never did i have only ever made fun of him and insulted him or made fun of one of his friends that he felt the need to pick up the pick up the you know the white knight's armor to defend the honor of this is what hair is so like huh i you people I with hair have this problem definition Fuck. there Except for he thinks I look like the rest of the people there. He li I you look not like them. I've seen a single living, breathing human being that has said there is similarity between anyone on that collage. <laughs> Fucking 30 people on that collage, and there's no similarity amongst any of them. All types of different backgrounds, faces, <laughs> hair, everything. Boy. Hair? Did he say hair? I have Charlie his hair. Oh, thought I clicked it. It's, it's not even fucking close. I don't know what he's seeing there. Uh, maybe he's like face blind, so he sees everyone as like a default RuneScape character on Tutorial Island. I don't know. But anyway, back to the woke topic. Fuck. I wanted him to define woke, and he gave me his definition. I don't want to go back. I don't want to go to back. To his credit, that was more than I would have expected, because last time I saw someone try to define woke, it was a fucking disaster. <laughs> he that was that a disaster, I'd what say. What wokeness is and what it means. I think that's a disaster. Now, he asked me if I think that's the biggest problem facing the youth today. And I didn't really get to get a clear answer in there, because he kept switching kind of rapidly. My answer is no. But I do think the biggest problem that's plaguing the youth today is the fact that kids feel forced to choose sides so early in life, before their brain has even had a chance to develop. Now, whether you want to subscribe to one side of the political spectrum or the other, you are always being forced down one path in this level of tribalism where you always have to blindly support that side and hate everything and everyone on the other. Fair. I think that shit sucks fuck. I think that's a horrible <laughs> way of living life. True. And it leads Fair. to a situation that we Fair. see a lot now where people aren't friends with someone that don't share every single thing in common. For example, I have friends that I disagree with on many things, but we're still friends at the end of the day. I agree with this. I have a lot of Republican friends. I think actually most of the people I talk to are Republicans, and I'm not I'm not Republican. My family is my whole family is conservative. And a lot of my friends are. And that's okay, we're still friends. We're still friends. We disagree on stuff. We're, we're still friends. We drive race cars. You saw I had a gun in one of the pictures. You know. Cross boundaries. Do things. Women's rights. All right, anyway. Going back. Today, because we do have commonality in, like, personality, and we have fun together. 
we don't need to agree on everything, and I wouldn't want that. I don't like echo chambers. And regardless of you, if you're on the woke side or the anti-woke side, you put yourself in an echo chamber no matter what. And both sides eat you alive if you so much as critique something about that side. It seems like it's constantly discouraged to think for yourself. You have to be fed your thoughts. Whether Ooh. that's being fed the thoughts that Charlie's just dropping the bomb, the, the knowledge bombs. Right? It's always being fed your own idea, their ideas, and then you try and adopt them as your own, and any kind of deviation from that is frowned upon in the communities. And in fact, if you decide you don't want to go down either of those paths and you try and like take information from both sides and form your own perspective, you get insulted for being a centrist. What is the meme? Enlightened centrist? Enlightened there is centrist, no yeah. Winning. The only winning move is not to play. That is what I feel the biggest problem is for the youth, is forcing them to make these decisions where they have to play for one team or the other for their whole fucking life, and then regardless of which side you choose to go to, you still get eaten alive by members of the same community if you're somewhat True. out of line or thinking too hard for yourself. Would you just stay out of That's that crap anyway? That's what I think anyway. the biggest problem is with growing up with social media and Twitter constantly plaguing people's minds. Which in turn leads to everyone being miserable and mad at everything and everyone. And I also think it lends itself to making everyone more isolated and lonely. Because then they lock themselves online, constantly fighting battles for their ideology on Twitter with fucking random bot accounts and actual nonsense every hour of every day so that that would be my answer to what is actually plaguing the youth similar overall and you can see it with the fresh oh video god video. i get stressed out when we move back to this all right so give me one uh, give me a minute i'm gonna go pee really quick i'm gonna do a brb we're gonna come right back to this god this guy every time i see sneeko on the screen it stresses me out it stresses me out because i know he's just gonna say some fucking terrible shit and i'm streaming it to my goddamn account I'm putting my identity on this shit. All right, we're back. Hello, I'm back. I did not wash my hands. That's okay because I have hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer saves me time. All right, let's play the video while I sanitize my hands. Video that you still haven't corrected where you called fresh a virgin. A lot of it, and you see people that hate me, they're like, oh, this alpha male, this alpha male, this alpha male Sneeko, and I've never once called myself that. I don't think I'm an alpha male. I advocate towards things that are conservative. He's a Sigma. Islamic values. Sigma man. That doesn't mean that I think I am an alpha male. I've never I'm called you an alpha male. I, I've, you, you're you're talking to someone. Consensus. Oh, you've called my friends that. You've called Fresh and Fit that. And you haven't they call them. When... They, you are really hung up on fighting for the honor of Fresh and Fit. What I did was exactly what you preach. I made fun of him. <laughs> Calling him a virgin is a joke. Do I think he's actually a virgin? What's up, Probably Hustle? Probably not. You and watching this? Even a good joke. Hustle, like, you watching this shit? I know you're probably. I feel. I feel like you're. You're invested. I feel like you're not generally invested in any of my videos, but I feel like today. Today you are invested in this video, so I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that somebody's watching this video with me. I just gotta get my hat nice, nice and perfected. There we go. All right. Let's go. That's the laziest joke of all time, which is why. Fuck! I need a beer now. I, Jesus. All right. Hold on. You gotta get a beer. All right. Should I up? I'm gonna upload this tonight, I think, because I feel like this is gonna go crazy on Twitter. So I'm gonna have to upload this tonight.
Oh god, the hair on my oh the hair on my oh fuck. All right. He just made it as a throwaway statement in the middle of a rant about his ridiculous story. This is something that clearly weighs heavy on the mind of Sneeko, where I insulted his friend and. My God, he has not let that go. This oh has become like his Vietnam. Yes. How do you people really have hair? Seems to have taken a big toll on How do you site. people have he hair? I owe a retraction and How apology you deal with for this making crap? fun of him and calling out his story. Fuck. And he says that I was wrong about all of it, even though, I'll play the clip in a moment, further into our conversation, he also admits he doesn't know if he actually fucked the three women that he claimed he <laughs> Oh, God. Nobody See, this is the good stuff. Outrageous. But they proved this he had This is what I've been waiting for. I've been waiting for the good stuff. DMs like a conversation with the NBA player. But that doesn't corroborate the whole story. There is no apology or retraction necessary. It is still such a fucking crazy story he told that probably wouldn't even happen in the most obscure Brazzers porno ever. <laughs> you don't correct your mistakes. You I were actually... wrong about Fresh and Fit. You were wrong about Andrew Tate. And so... you were wrong about the movie Cuties. Okay. Well, I'm glad you tied it back to Cuties, but before we get back to that... How am I? I feel like I'm one of the very few people on the internet who corrects himself. Whenever I make a mistake, I do go and make a clarification. For example, I got something wrong with a content creator holding a stand up competition that was absolute dog shit, and then someone came there and made fun of him, and I didn't know the full context. Once I got the full context, I went back and made a follow up video to explain it in more depth with more clarity. I always do that. With Fresh and Fit, you really hung up on this idea that he fucked. Three women that night after meeting an NBA player at a bar and they exchanged Instagram information and it turns out they were Eskimo bros. Be drill. Girls pussy. Like, it's an outrageous story. Sorry. Now, whether or not it's true, you haven't proved it either. Were you there watching him fuck? Were you cheering him on? He verified it. He showed the DMs with the basketball player. They that, did the whole podcast verifying the, the story. The DMs. You didn't correct it. <laughs> you, okay, so you didn't correct that. They, they did verify it. This whole video is like watching. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not, I know I'm dressed up as Charlie. Because I like Charlie, and I'm, I'm trying to be as unbiased as possible in this whole thing. But it, it feels like Charlie is somewhat of an adult talking to, like, a child. He's like, bruh, 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 the DMs, man. The DMs. Did you see the DMs? Like, did you see the, did you see the DMs, man? The DMs that prove everything. Like, motherfucker, dude. Like, I hope to shit you don't ever have to go to court, dude. Because the DMs ain't going to save you shit from court. I'm sorry, you didn't correct it. Andrew did they have the basketball the player? Did they have the basketball player and the three girls he fucked come on and be like, oh my god, he absolutely plowed the shit out of me. It was the best <laughs> sex of my life. Did, did he okay, have... That would be... I, that would never happen, but he did show the DMs with the basketball player. The DMs, the man, the DMs. Whether or not you want to believe he was with three women, I wasn't there either. I guess we're never going to know. But exactly. he did get the DMs from the basketball player. To add on to this, if there's even small elements of that story that are somewhat true, I guarantee the whole thing is still embellished. Because the story he told is a work of fucking Tumblr fan fiction. It is not exactly how it played out under no universe, especially not for him. He is an extremely sensitive guy. This is the longest Charlie. This is the longest. Fu yeah, Beedrill. I got Beedrill. Fuck yeah. Um, this is the longest Charlie video I ever seen that wasn't a podcast. He would probably have started crying after the first round of sex instead of going right to the next girl. Like, it is just not something that happened, and even if there is some elements of truth to the story, the whole thing is probably still not 100% accurate, and even still, the whole core of the video is the same, I was making fun of the guy. That would still stay entirely intact. Now, I'm getting carried away with Fresh and Fit here. The topic, the conversational topic here was about not correcting things that I've got wrong. Why is my timer not working? Pride myself on oh, the timer being didn't start. To accept when I'm there wrong. we go. I think that's one of the most important qualities a person can have in something that is very unfortunately absent from most people in the current day and age. Where everyone has this complete reluctance and this like, ooh, yuckiness, I can't be wrong, I have to be perfect all the time attitude. I am more than willing to embrace and accept when I get things wrong. Which is why I've made so many videos saying... I was wrong about this, got this wrong, this one was off, and adding more clarity to situations that I've covered when more information came out, or if something turned out to be fraudulent. I have done that for years, and I always have. In the case of Fresh and Fit, there is nothing to fucking correct. Now, I'm going a little out of order of our conversation because we kept bouncing back and forth between certain things fucking pinballing around, but I'm trying to connect all the points together, so we're going to talk about the Andrew Tate thing in a moment. That's something we talked about for a little bit because... 
Tate is very clearly someone that <laughs> is a heavy influence in Sneeko's life. But before then, I do want to focus on a couple other things we talked about, and that's him victimizing himself constantly. This is something I've called out, and I wanted to hear his perspective on it. A lot of the things you critique... Oh, God. All right, hold on. Let me prep. I have to prep for his fucking talking. He's so stupid. It's pissing me off. Four are ones that you actively partake in. Victimization. That's a big thing with the woke, right? Constantly playing the victim. Do you recognize how often you play the victim in terms of, like, I'm being canceled, everyone's against me, you go on your Discord to talk more about it, even this morning talking and naming and shaming people that you think have slighted you as, like, a cancellation? You do the exact same things. Like, you are also an SJW. That's not victimizing, that's actively pointing out that literally every single streamer, every streamer, the entire internet, all of YouTube, reacted to your video. I drop a response where I even apologize for going out of character and getting emotional. And then people... It's this is This is part of the video, by the way. This is not my internet. This is part of Charlie's video. Nobody watches my photo. Some of them react to me and making me die in an animation, but nobody wants to see what I have to say. I've become a caricature on YouTube rather than somebody who has something to say. It's you became a character on YouTube because, first off, your opinion was fucking bullshit, and second of all, Meat Canyon made you a goddamn character in a cartoon, which was hilarious. So, anyway. I've become a meme because I am banned. That's not victimizing, that's actively pointing out how strong censorship is and how people on mainstream platforms can run with the narrative when you're not there. The way you just justified it is a way many other people that you call playing the victim would also be able to justify things. The point is, when you are constantly whining and talking about how you're being attacked, it is still being victimized. I tried to point a mirror at him to point out that <sighs> a lot of the things he criticizes other f others for is things that he actively does himself. And the one I yeah, it's called projection, everyone. It's called projecting. It's projecting. If you feel like you're fat, you feel like you got to tell everyone else they're fat. And it makes you feel a little bit better. It's called projecting. Stan was victimization, because the way he justifies, you know, playing the victim is justification people have used in the past that he calls out. So I was just trying to illustrate that it's not only hypocritical but also just kind of silly that he, in, with all of his beliefs, still plays the victim and whines so much on Twitter. But that point wasn't really landing. We just kept kind of going in a circle about that one. So I don't want to focus on it too much here. It's disingenuous, and now we're having the debate, but you would rather DM and go and make this about drama. Oh, let me go and react and do more drama content rather than have a conversation. But I never did that. Why the, fuck is, also, why the fuck is this guy just, like, in his room? I feel like if, if, if Charlie was like, hey, I'm going to fucking diss you, I would be like, I would, like, set up in my room right here. This is pretty much where I would set up and be like, and put my wig on, my Charlie wig on, and be like, well, Charlie, what do you think? Uh, do you really think that actually what I'm doing is actually non... Okay, anyway, I'm getting too much into it. All right, here we go. But I, you, you have to remember that I didn't start any of this. You reacted to me telling jokes about your friend and then had your audience tell me, and that went on for like two weeks, and so eventually I explained why I don't like you. And then when I did that, that was the only time I planned on talking about you. You went on stream with your gun to threaten me, and you kept it up for three months, adding on, me. I didn't do that to threaten you. That was a joke about clips. You you actually think I was threatening you? I whether you're or not you were. You're gonna talk about victimized. You're gonna okay. You're gonna say victimized. And you're gonna say I'm actively trying to threaten you by I've, saying a clips joke on a stream. I don't think you were actually coming after my life. It doesn't change the fact that for three months you <sighs> continued to carry it on. So I hard wasn't to reacting watch. to you. I wasn't even talking about you. This was a quick point that I think he did see my side on. He likes to make the claim that I was farming him for views and AdSense money, which couldn't be further from the truth. I never wanted to talk about. He, my Charlie doesn't need fucking to farm anybody. He, he this motherfucker could this motherfucker puts up videos about rating the best macaroni and cheese. He this motherfucker put a video up about the best milk. He rated milk. Like, anybody on the fucking planet gave two sh fucking shits about milk. 
in the best milk. And he's still got like 3 million views on that video, so. Though I never had plans of doing it. He kept poking and prodding me until I did. And then once I did, he wasn't happy that I was so mean in my response that for three months he did carry on this uh, very one-sided beef until once again, I decided to spit and play in the pig pen and I made a tweet firing back at him after months of not even mentioning him and then made a follow-up video, but it was never part of my agenda to do that. And I think after explaining it to him, he did see that he was really the instigator. And I am glad that he did have that, you know, realization after our conversation that he was willing to accept that. I, I think that is healthy that he was open to seeing that, okay, maybe I was wrong and his intention wasn't drama AdSense farming. What do you think that I've said that I don't believe in? So for, we'll use our beef for example. You think I'm weak for not taking you up on a boxing fight, but on the same side of that coin, you won't take Brandon Buckingham up on that boxing fight. The whole point was, I don't stand by my beliefs because I won't fight you for it. Well, with that perspective, why wouldn't you fight Brandon Buckingham when you feel so strongly about your beliefs and he says the same things I do? Wouldn't you want to prove because that you stand by- Because the first fight that I want to take, the first fight that I want to take would be against somebody, one, who has more clout than me, two, I so disagree selfish. with ideo ideologically. I don't disagree with him ideologically at all. But he says the same really things I say about you. This, this person has been obsessed for a long time. He's suing me for emotional I'm distress. sipping tea. Personally, I don't care about this person. And there's no benefit for me to take my first fight with this person. So then if your I belief... If I somebody, I challenge... So the, then you're... The reason I challenge... I, I was banned on Twitter for challenging Hasanabi to a fight. One, because a lot of people want to see that. He's well known. He disagrees with me completely. There's a lot of tension for that fight. If I fought you, you have said a lot of things that are very negative about me. There's beef in the air. And you talk a lot about me, so things that you probably wouldn't say to my face. It would be an entertaining fight. But that's, again, that's not the point. The whole point is you think I am weak and you keep harping on this for not taking you up on the fight. But you won't take someone up on a fight that's saying the exact same things I am. So it seems like the beliefs, you don't stand by that strongly if you're not confident I you can you make a spectacle. A Charlie, Charlie, we both know you wouldn't accept the fight. Right, I've made the that very was, clear. We both know. Even when I challenge you, we both know. It's to point out that a lot of people talk a lot of... Dude, this is some fucking... This is some fucking... This is some middle school crap right now. This is some fucking... This is some serious middle school garbage. Like. <laughs> what? We all know you won't fight me, dude. You won't fight. Holy shit, dude. When did, when did fighting. When did like fist fighting like stop being like the denominator of of situational figuring shit out end? When did that end? Like sixth grade? No, maybe eighth grade. I think I might have tried to fight someone in eighth grade. What the fuck, man? <laughs> like, what? And I think maybe I went a little far. Going all the way to eighth grade. This guy's like trying to like Okay, whatever. Right. Bitch, you won't fight me cause cause you won't fight seriously, dude, that's your art Ugh, whatever. Alright, whatever. Talk online and they never have to face the consequences <laughs> because they stay in their room gaming all day. That was to point it out. Man, okay, bro. This back and forth internet drama. They want to see people go and settle. I've never said a word about this person that you're bringing up. I haven't said a word about him since last summer. I won't say his name publicly again. I'm being sued for emotional distress. I'm leaving that alone. I have no problem with this person. You, we have gone back and forth. We're going back and forth on Twitter. People want to see it. People are tired of these keyboard warriors. Going yeah, because we fucking love Charlie and he's wrecking your ass, dude. And we love that he's destroying your ass. And he's destroying your ass right now in this video. All right, anyway. Going back and forth. That was to point out the fact that men should not feel so comfortable talking a lot of talk on Twitter that they would never say in person. You made claims of Brandon Buckingham being like a rapist and shit. Wouldn't that be something that you'd want to fight about at that point? Like, that I, was I, not a claim that I made. That was not a claim that I made. I can't remember the specifics of it, but you did toss so out stupid. the word rapist this when is talking dumb. about Brandon Buckingham. I, I don't hate remember this. the context it was used in, but you did mention it, right? 
So why is all of a sudden that now beneath you? Like, you, you don't have any problems with him now after he's willing to fight. The point is, you're talking about Fucked. you say these things and you don't have consequences. Well, what about you? You said these things. He's trying to give you those consequences that you think are so important, and you won't take him up on it. There is a clear hypocrisy. Like, that was, that was the, something. That was a different example. The guy was a uh, previous fan. It's a giant misunderstanding. There's a lawsuit involved, so I can't talk about this too much, but that is not what I accuse him of. I do not think he is that word. I never said that about him, and that's a lie. He wants to do it because there's a there's an obsession going on, but that's irrelevant. Well, it, it's all tying back into the point I'm making, where the things that you preach against, you yourself embody. I'm not trying to use this as a gotcha moment, but I do think it's important to illustrate here that Sneeko is still denying this claim, even though there's tons and tons of video evidence where he does say that Brandon... This dude is like a fucking idiot. More of an idiot than I do on the screen currently. Buckingham was threatening to rape someone. How do you people have hair? Times, and that's what the lawsuit was Fuck. about. But it doesn't prevent Sneeko from fighting Br Brandon Buckingham if he was you know, open to it for defending the beliefs and stuff, which is the point I was trying to make. I'm gonna R, I'm gonna R word your girlfriend. Literally said that. And he said, I'm gonna R word your girlfriend, bro. This dude said he is going to R word my girlfriend. Bro, nothing warrants saying I'm gonna R word your girlfriend. Saying you're gonna R word my girlfriend? He said that? Yes. Word for word. I'm going to R word your girlfriend. Okay, talking shit by threatening R word. Claiming that someone said they're going to rape someone is insinuating they are a rapist for making the threat. So <sighs> this is just a point that I think he was way off the mark on because he did make these accusations against Brandon Buckingham. Your energy, $50 on a course from vetted millionaires or watch a gaming streamer for six hours every night? Well... <laughs> What? He didn't use the course to get rich. He's getting rich from the course the same way that the course that you're selling is not like your main way that you made money. You are making money from that course now as opposed to what the course is teaching. But again, this is getting completely That's sidetracked. Not true. That's just not true. That's not my main focus. This is a si this is getting sidetracked like a fucking child. Like what 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 what, what, what is this even conversation anymore? Then come I enjoy doing it, and it's a great way to have a network. And you talk Who about gives a the shit? men that are out there. What are you doing to go and help these people? We understand that there's a problem with loneliness of men. People get in there, they ask me questions about how do I network better? How do I find people who are like-minded? You <sighs> give them advice, and you can see them transform their life. I'm curious as to what you think is a better alternative, because game, you stream game this dude in is six hours. Fucking, is that a better solution? This dude is fucking floundering. This is a child in the world of adults. Play video games or giving advice to men who don't know how to find a community of like-minded people who don't know how to make money online. And want I'm a man, and I don't know how to make money online. And let me tell you, I will not fucking ask you, dude. I will never ask you how to make money online. Holy shit. Live a lifestyle where, look, I'm in Japan. You're still in the same room that I've seen you in since high school. Oh, I... <laughs> I can go places. I choose not to. I'm happy here the same way you're happy traveling in Japan. Like, these are non wow. arguments that you're making. It's the same argument I've of... I've never seen what? you outside of your room. And, and, and I don't know how many years I've seen you. Have you seen Charlie outside of his room before? I haven't. Loser. On YouTube. I've never seen you out of your room. I've seen you with dildos in your room, throwing it at each other and your friends. I've never seen you travel. I've never seen you network with other people. I've never this seen dude you is show floundering. your possible if they make money as well. I've floundering. I've seen you play video games since like 2016. <clears throat> in one of the clips you showed of me, I am outside at Gasparilla with my girlfriend. What are you talking about? We got into a little bit more of a heated argument about this point. This I is do stupid. Still great issue with gurus charging for how long? Are, oh my god, we're like we're just past halfway. How long is this fucking video? Nico does with the creativity kit. And it's something he actually pitched a lot during our conversation. So it seems something that he strongly believes in. I don't know if that's because of the monetary gain he experiences from it, or if he truly believes it is something that's changing lives. But he did pitch it multiple times because. I pointed out that I don't like that kind of shit. It feels exploitative to people that are desperate and looking for anything, whether it's a sense of community or a sense of here's how to get successful like me. When really the success is built upon the people that pay for it, not what you're preaching. At least the majority of the time that's the case. 
And then he made the false claim about, you know, you don't showcase what's possible because you stay in your room a lot. <laughs> Which I do stay in my room a lot, but there is so much content on my channel where I'm outside of my uh. room. It's baffling that he'd even try and make that claim with a straight face. And even in the number one thing he showed for me, which is the picture of me and my girlfriend, we are literally outside at a party. So it, it, I don't understand why he keeps making that claim that I don't leave my room or I'm, I'm only in the house. But it is something that I fought him on and he did clearly see he was incorrect on. So another thing he was willing to concede. But still maintaining that courses, like $50 a month, isn't a lot of money, especially for the value he believes people get out of it. And maybe I can only speak for everything I've ever seen, but I've never read or met someone who is successful because they bought a online guru's course. If you buy an on online guru's course for $50 a month, let me give you a, a tip, and this is not financial advice, but if you're literally spending $50 a fucking month for financial advice, put $50 a month into an ETF and invest it. Not into this douchebag's fucking whatever. All right. I only <clears throat> ever see or hear about the people who have lost so much more money than they ever had to spend because they are chasing this fucking hopium that's being peddled their way with these courses and guides. Now again... Sneakos might not be that. I haven't read it. I'm not 100% sure. But the vast majority of these guru courses are completely worthless scams. You're talking about things that are agreeable. And this is what I've said about Andrew Tate. He doesn't always say silly, dumb shit, but he does. And he couples it with good, real things. Like you mentioned, porn addiction is a problem. Like, no one's going to disagree with that. But everything that you're sprinkling in outside of it is totally fucking irrelevant to the rest of it, man. You going and flexing on your audience isn't showing them what's possible. It's showing what's possible when they're paying for your lifestyle. The advice you give, you thrive off them staying miserable, right? The second they get happy, the second they get money, no, the second I, I they, definitely don't. they will not I be paying don't. for your course if anymore. My audience, if my audience does not get value from my content, they're going to leave. The reality is that streamers and content creators like you... The audience always grows up. They watch a little, the gaming content, then they grow up. They're not learning anything. And so they go to another content creator. They go to somebody else who is popular or trendy. You need to add value to the audience or else they are going to grow out of it. And the I value the from the value of most things is entertainment. What you used to do was humor interlaced with your stuff. Now it's just preaching to the choir of people that already subscribe to your hive mind. It's you're still doing no, the same thing. That's what you see on Twitter because that's the only mainstream platform that I'm still allowed to be on. If you watch my stream, I have I watched your streams. In a couple weeks, when I watch my stream for full hour, it's not preaching. A lot of it's humor. My motto is seek truth through funny. Which I you've look abandoned. At what's going on in the world? Hmm? You, you, you. It seems you have completely abandoned. I actually feel bad for this guy. I, I don't think he's actually an asshole. I think he's a genuine person. I think he's just fucking misguided as, as shit. I actually feel pretty bad for this guy. I, I've been dogging this guy for a long time, but listening to him talk, it's its actually kind of sad. He's just misguided. I don't think he's, I don't think he's an evil person at all. I think he's just fucking lost. He's, he's like lost in the Andrew Tate fucking cyclone of douchebaggery. I have watched your streams. I have. A lot of it devolves into just talking again about the same things you always mention. Soy boys, bots, woke mind virus, and then dancing around. And then always trying to defend and find the other side of something controversial. It's the same formula over and over again because that's how you found to keep your audience. Like, look at his fucking face, man. He's listening. He's he's actually fucking listening. I don't think that he's he's waiting to respond. I think he's actually listening. But I think he's so goddamn into the alpha male fucking bullshit that he doesn't know how to respond without having to defend. But look at him. He's listening. He's not not listening. He's listening. He he gives a shit. He just, I think he realized, may, maybe, or maybe he didn't, but maybe he realized he's in the wrong side of the thing and he's got to defend his way out of a wet paper bag. It's no different than That's people not true. that... I go on Omegle and I'm joking around with for an hour, two hours, I bring on my viewers and we joke to each other. I bring on people, real life people, they sit next to me and we joke around. I have different podcasts, I have different guests. The I jokes. I did a podcast you... with Ryan Dawson. 
uncovering Epstein and uncovering the truth about 9-11, which I really recommend that you go see, to an alternative platform that's labeled as an alt-right conspiracy website. Well, I don't know. Maybe I take it back now. The same audience. Maybe he's you a little crazy. You can't do that by repeating the same things every day. You have to add some value. But you can. That's the number one grift right now. As long as you are contributing to an echo chamber, the people will not leave you. You form a reliance where they're constantly suckling your tit for ver <laughs> validation that their point of view is the right one. And the more that you claim the victim, the more that solidifies and cements them that that belief is the correct one because That's people are attacking not true at all. I've been talking about the woke mind bias for a long time, and now my audience... See, I feel, like he's, I feel like he heard that. He heard that. I, I saw his brain interpret that information. He did. He listened. But he's just in a, he's in a corner. He's like a scared animal in a corner, so he's got to defend. But I feel like he's he's getting it. And to know the truth, so I've been interviewing different people. I did a whole podcast uncovering Epstein and who's actually on the client list because that's one big conspiracy theory that people want to know more He's about. Just regurgitating crap. Uncovering 9/11 and the Iraq War and what I've done this same thing too when I thought I believed Epstein. something too. He's just kind of regurgitate if you crap. They're gonna leave. Admittedly, I do feel bad doing one thing that I hate when other people do, which is like he mentions, box them into categories. Because it is very possible, outside of all the content I've watched from him, that he does other things. Now, I have seen a lot of him. I've watched quite a few streams now, out of uh, curiosity, since his big meltdown with the, the whole dancing with the gun thing about our beef. <clears throat> so I went on there and I did watch some of the streams from that point forward, but they always went the same way. But I do think it was unfair of me to try and box it in and say he's always doing the same thing, when it is entirely possible that it's just my exposure to it and what I've seen so far. So I do completely concede that it is Fair. possible he does more and talk about more than just what I see on Twitter and the streams that I've seen. I mean, that's a fair. Later into this discussion, he boxes me in and says all I do is... Yeah, but he says, he says a lot of garbage, too, so it, it makes his credibility lower. I, it's, hard to, it's hard to sympathize. ...room playing video games on stream for seven hours a day. So he is still guilty of the same thing he's accusing others of, which is a point I like to make... But he doesn't fully realize when I say it to him. But hopefully, you know, after our conversation, he does take a step back and recognize, like, okay, I am guilty of a lot of the things I'm accusing others of. But anyway, that was a point well, fair that was point. kind of branching off from the core topic at, at this moment of the discussion, which was courses. I have no respect for people that are selling courses on, like, here's how you make money. The number one way to make money, guaranteed success. You're going to, you know, make it with this one. Give me this amount of money every month for my book. I always find that to be exploitative, shitty, scummy, and completely useless. Those kind of creators, those kind of people, they rely on desperation. So let's think about this logically. Why would someone who's selling courses on happiness and how not to be lonely, how to get laid, or how to make money, why would they actually want you to succeed? Because then they lose you as a customer. It is far more in their interest to keep you miserable to keep buying the product. And it is something a lot of them are guilty of doing. Now, I haven't seen Sneeko's creativity kit, so I can't say for sure if he is also guilty of it as well. Maybe he does try and offer legitimate advice and actually help people. It is possible, but that's not the case for the vast majority of them, which is why I always call it out as this is scummy, or at the very least, unnecessary. We live in a time where you have access to all the information you could ever want. You, you, can, you just need to search it up. You don't need to be paying people that you view as successful to learn their secrets when those secrets they're revealing aren't what they use to get wealthy in the first place. It's selling you hope. When you are buying their product, you are filling their pro their pockets. It, that is the product, the, the book. Not what's in it, it's the book. They're making their money off your purchase of the book. They're not making their money off of the advice they've given you, at least not the majority of the time. And that's what I was trying to talk about here. What are your- All right, well, let me take a little sneak Sneak, sneak o breaks. That was not. That was not intentional. I'm gonna take a little sneaky sneak break. Take a little peep ski, and uh, see you in about a minute.
All right, we're back. Let's see what the fuck Sneeko's dumbass has to say. What are, what are they? I don't know them. Can, can you tell so me I what feel, you believe in? Yeah, I feel like I've made my beliefs very clear. I am very firmly on the side of there are certain things, and it's going to be different for everyone, that make people happy. And the main thing I want is for people to be happy. I don't like that men are alone, which is why a lot of the advice I give is telling them to get out of their comfort zone and start with something like the gym. The gym is a very social environment. It's an environment where everyone's working towards similar goals. You immediately surround yourself with like-minded people, and maybe you make a connection at the gym. Maybe you can find a friend there, but even if you don't, you are out of your comfort zone in an environment where people are working for a similar goal. And that already changes your mindset as a person. You've given yourself a goal, you are acting on it, and now you're surrounded by people that are also in a similar boat. I think most importantly is I want people to be happy and a lot of times they can't find that. So I don't think there's anything wrong with escapism like watching someone play a game or even playing games yourself, watching a sport, playing a sport yourself is also great. I play pickup basketball every Thursday, getting out, talking outside of a comfort zone instead of say, sitting online making 20,000 tweets on the Sneeko Twitter I think is not productive. Replying to Sneeko's Twitter, replying to my Twitter, none of it I think is productive. I've had Twitter since 2012. I've made 2,600 tweets and half of those are just shit posts or a retweet. I think all of that locking yourself inside as a recluse living in this completely toxic landscape like Twitter. Alright Charlie, you're calling my ass out now. Just relax. Twitter is the most detrimental thing for a person, and that extends to TikTok as well. I think TikTok has absolutely ruined people's brains in terms of what they can even stomach as an attention span. Having to have, like, Subway Surfer underneath a video of someone talking because you can't focus long enough, I think it's all a problem. So the things I talk about are usually geared towards either entertaining people for eight minutes a day or whatever, or during a stream if they're already home from work and just need to unwind, I think all of that is fine. But I do always try and give some level of advice. My background, I'm, I don't know if you know, I'm a human science graduate with a concentration in exercise physiology. I believe very firmly in the mind-body connection in terms of strength building and muscle building. It, it's going to change your whole brain chemistry and it will help improve the way you're looking at the world. So that's one of the big things I talk about is even if you're 100% comfortable with your body. Oh, there damn, is no my reason good. <laughs> not to at least try to make these kind of differences and change your perspective on things. Oh, dude. Like, it I never looked at them in the camera before. Issue. It helps your mind <clears throat> overall. I am always against people paying for advice from so called gurus and That's muscle building. You don't need it. The beauty of the internet is it is an unlimited repository of all of the human knowledge, just this compendium of every piece of information for every subject you could want. And you can access it for free. Under no circumstances do I ever advocate for someone paying up to $50 a month for advice they can freely find right now. Even if it doesn't come yeah, with a built-in... Yeah, gamers always have the argument, but then they never talk about how college is a waste of time and that people go... But it's easy talking. What are you talking about, dude? That's not even a... If you could pay $50 and talk to a vetted millionaire who has made money online in a way that they don't teach in school, $50 is a steal. People but you get really upset about this because you're paying somebody directly and you know who you're spending the money on. You don't get upset about college because you don't know the principal, you don't know the headmaster, you don't know the donors. They're nameless people behind a university. So the point of the network is, is collection of information concentrated in one place and also the network of people that you can find. Right here, I'm in Japan traveling with somebody that I met from the creativity kit. That no. is something that is invaluable and that you will only find by paying $50, which is not a huge price. That is a big price, but also, do you see what just happened there? You $50 went in is a huge price? That's the same price as your merch that you're using to advertise on this drama. Would you rather your audience pay $50 for a t-shirt from a gamer, or they meet somebody that they can go start a business with? That, the merch isn't $50 for a t-shirt, but regardless, what I want you to recognize is what happened there. I was talking- it is. Okay, I, it's still not, but- with what just happened ah. there is I was talking about something and you went into PR speak and salesman mode to talk about your course and you attributed something to me that I actually talk against. I actually have spoken many times about why college just isn't right for everybody. It's not. It simply isn't. I think college provides an invaluable social experience where it, for the first time in your life you're on your own. So you learn how to fend for yourself. You learn how to interact with roommates, strangers. So you get social skills. But College is not going to be a great fit for everyone, especially when it comes to certain academia sp uh, positions, especially like in some art fields. I actually talk a lot about that, but you keep lumping me in with this 
perception of a gamer and these beliefs that you don't know anything about me on and yet you still put me in there you and should, then, then you should probably make them more clear i, I do I, 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 <laughs> for years, he makes them no pretty damn clear so this motherfucker makes them pretty damn clear i gotta be honest he never shuts the fuck up about it so gaming i've seen your reactive drama content i didn't know that that was your method to make people happy which I think is a very is a narrow way of answering that question about what you believe in and what your belief system is. I was still but that's going. fine. But I'm glad that you said that, and I think that you should reiterate that more in your video to add more value, add more value to your audience. I've so you said you've watched for a long time. These aren't secrets. I made a video six years ago. I just double checked. I uploaded a video six years ago called "You're Getting Fucked by College Textbooks." The entire video is about how college textbooks in particular are a massive scam and a very predatory system that universities are using. I do talk about these things. You are just not seeing them and then still putting words in my mouth. Uh, my beliefs, I think, are very clear to the people that watch. They're not a secret. They're not hidden. I make them very obvious. It was after this brief discussion here that the entire landscape of our conversation changed and it became very clear Sneeko never knew anything about me to begin with. It, it, he keeps calling me a gamer. Gamer, gamer, gamer. Gamer. Hard G on me. Gamer. And I Gamers that's are because that's the, the only cancer of Earth. Watched, but I really don't think I've ever made a secret what my beliefs are. I talk about them on stream. I talk about them in videos. I've never been fearful of it. And yet Sneeko either pretends he never saw them or maybe he just legitimately never saw them. But after explaining to him... He really seemed to change his whole tone about me as a person. I'm not a psychiatrist here or an expert in the field, but if I had to wager a guess, I think Sneeko put an image of me in his head and attributed a whole ton of characteristics to that scarecrow that he put in there that just isn't actually me in reality. And that's who he attacks so vehemently. vehemently. Whereas I do know a lot about Sneeko because there is a big difference between us in terms of our belief. It's all the fuck he talks about. It's the only thing that ever leaves his mouth is always preaching about something or trying to make a big statement about their beliefs or their politics. Whereas that's not me. The main thing I focus on is just entertainment. My videos are made purely for fun. It's just because I thought it'd be entertaining. It's a silly topic. It's something fun. And that's it. There's never really anything. All right, let's get to the meat and potatoes of this bitch. Cause I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting very tired of this whole argument. Let's just get to the meat and potato. All right, let's get to the where Sneeko talks again. Here we go. Let's skip it through. Skip it through. We're skipping through. If it's Saturday and I'm not trying to fucking spend my whole Saturday watching this stupid ass video. All right. Moving on. Somewhere uh, and like had a, a perspective that made sense is somehow bolstered by spamming slurs, for example. Like during that stream with the gun. I couldn't listen to you because you kept saying slurs. How is that necessarily helping make people happy or positive in any way, shape, or form? What does that do to contribute to your overall goal? Because it's not humor either, so it's not seeking truth through funny. It's literally just spamming slurs because you were mad at me. It is The reason that it's funny is because I'm on a platform that has free speech and you're not bound by wokeness where you can't say certain words and you're labeled racist or homophobic or Man, he's, where you can say things he's doubling down on this wokeness racist shit or whatever it is. why say something you don't why, why say something you don't mean though what what does that do wouldn't that go against your ideology where you're like faking it that's not a word a word doesn't encourage a word doesn't encompass a whole belief system a word can be funny the word faggot is funny uh. That was the funniest thing you said. Man, I have to fuck. I'm gonna have to fucking block that word out. Jesus Christ. Well, no, I. Well, he's famous. I'm not. I'm gonna have to bleep that word out. How, how is this? That? I, I, See, I don't, you're laughing now. See? Well, it's because it's just. It's funny. Hour. He's laughing because you're an idiot. It's like talking to a child. Yeah, you're a dumbass. You're a so, it's funny. You're it's not funny. It's, he, he's such a stupid, dumb fuck. It's a, <laughs> he's laughing because of how stupid he is, and he thinks he's laughing at the word. It's like going, poo-poo pee-pee, and then you're laughing because the dumbass that said poo-poo pee-pee is a fucking dumbass, and he's going, see, poo-poo pee-pee's funny. <laughs> this is the whole little word. <laughs> yes, because it's such a silly defense of it. It's like, 
It's like a child who hears fuck for the first time and he's like, yeah. ooh, daddy right. said fuck? Exactly. Like, That's what I just said. A little goofy mode. Just what I said. A little wacko style. So the slurs is something I've mentioned. I couldn't watch him on stream because he just kept saying the F slur. All right. We don't have to listen to Charlie to ex explain this. We know this. We're going to skip to more of Sneeko being a dumbass. Here we go. But you don't take the time to go and look at all the evidence that was debunked. That's not true, though. Because like, I why, why, why do you spend the narrative laughing at somebody falsely in prison, but you can't go and just look at a couple screenshots and see that as garbage? You're laughing at the pizza box putting two people in jail because of what you saw on Twitter. When I say the word faggot or I say a slur... Oh, my God. I have to bleep all these There's no fucking things out, asshole. Nobody goes to jail falsely. I have looked at the evidence <sighs> from both sides. I always do. I don't just go to these tribes and just assume everything on my side is right and everything on that side is wrong. I take information from all angles in order to find where I personally sit on this perspective, on this situation. So, for the Tate brothers, being charged twice with human trafficking, while there is some shady shit from the victims, there is still real merit to some of the things that people were talking about, such as something you talked about as well. The taking of the passports from some of the women and getting there under the guise that they would be able to date them. Those are very odd, very peculiar things. So it's not like it's just, oh, all of that's wrong and we have to disregard all of it because this is here. There is, on both sides here, evidence that makes it a very complicated case, which is why it's gone on for so long, right? It's not one where I know the answer. They could be innocent, they could be guilty. I do think it's weird they've now been charged twice, but there, there is some very odd things there because that's not exactly a light thing to come after someone for. And there is things that you, you have talked about. wrong that people can go to jail for four months without any evidence yes. of charges? Yes. And I, I, even outside of the Tates, I have said that in this country, where you can go to jail on suspicion of things without ever being charged, it's a problem. Yes, it is a problem. Okay. I didn't see that video. I saw the video laughing about the pizza box putting in jail. I didn't, right. Did you make a video about that? Yes, and I talked... Well, it's in, the, it's in that video where I say I don't know if he's guilty... I don't like if there's real victims here. Like, I would never celebrate someone being a human trafficker because there's victims. I didn't, I wouldn't celebrate him being a human trafficker. That means there are real victims there. Even though I disagree with, like, his Hustlers University and a lot of the dumb shit he says, I wouldn't <laughs> want him to be a human trafficker. That means there are real victims being in terrible situations. I did say that, and I don't know if he's guilty. I don't know if he's innocent. Nobody does right now except for them and whatever is going on in Romania. The joking about a pizza box is things I make about anything that has craziness around it. Like the Gwyneth Paltrow trial. There's so much silliness there that I talk about, but at the end of the day, I don't know who's innocent or guilty. I'm joking about the goofiness of things that have come up. Right? I mean, that's fair. And I feel like uh, this I, guy's yeah, getting it. Gone. Now, he mentioned Andrew Tate, and this is another thing. <sighs> is All right, we're getting to the end, folks. Here. We're getting close here. Goes life. And I made two videos covering Andrew Tate. One of them, I'm ready to, I'm ready to end this. But I'm paying attention. Things that he's done, and the other when he got arrested. So let's talk about that. I have always maintained that Andrew Tate is a very entertaining clown most of the time. But much like a lot of personalities online, especially this is for the thumbnail, courses, by the way. He has to sprinkle in very agreeable things with some of his rants. So he has good things that he actually will say, especially in terms of like men and their loneliness. And how working out is extremely beneficial right. to helping with mentality and just general overall mood and well-being. So he does say agreeable things that I've always said he has done a decent job of with those certain topics. But on the whole, most of the things he says are just outrageous nonsense about like how he doesn't watch Star Wars and that's why he gets pussy and has expensive cars or why books are stupid. Like th there's a lot of silliness. <laughs> books there. are stupid. I have always maintained. <laughs> is completely exploitative of desperate men. So yes, I have exploitive. made jokes about Andrew Tate. I am exploitative. not their biggest fan. Now, when I did cover the arrest, I did mention the pizza box theory. At the time, that was reported by All multiple right. Yes, we know we love we love Charlie's we love his Okay, up. Oh. All right, let's just finish it up. I think this is the last Let's just go let's just skip to the last bit of Sneeko's opinions and I think we're going to end it here. Here we go. We're getting close. Yes, we know, Charlie. We know. You're very rational. We know. All right, here we go. The... Important one to have. And one thing that happened that I still can't believe is real is during our conversation... If he wasn't rational, I wouldn't be wearing this wig right now. And, and me as well during this. It, it comes from a place of cope and of jealousy because they see people who are living a lifestyle 
opposite of them. And instead of admitting that there's a different path or admitting that they could have a good point, they try to bring down their character. That's the common theme I see with these people. So the intentions that I see from these people and the collage, they're not pure, they're not good. It's jealousy and it's hate. And again, that is still something they could say about you as well. It, that, that's just one of the things that's I was fair. really- and That's fair and that's why you, you made me realize that I need to, this whole hate brigade on Sneeko in the recent weeks, and I'm going to repurpose my message now. I'm not gonna, what I meant. Yo, do you know uh, Moist Critical? Hey, say what's up to him right now. We're, we're, oh shit, uh, he's gonna shout out to me. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, that's hey, me, hey, 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 what's up? I'm Moist Critical. I saw you on Twitter. Yeah. That's hey, me. Hey, 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 what's up, guys? Traveling the world right now. <laughs> Kid. Yeah, we saw me. What did you think of the Meat Can You video? <laughs> That was pretty funny. Yeah. Hey, Charlie, what's up, man? It was hey, funny. How's it going, man? About it. Cool. Hey, yeah. Charlie. We squashed the beef. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Yeah. I've been, yeah, that's I've awesome. Been well, this is a wholesome ending. Uh, it's funny. Uh, I think that's this is a wholesome ending. Um, wow. We could talk again in the future. Um, wow. You should have beef. And yeah, you did. I, I, I want to thank you for uh, for starting that whole Nico hate brigade because it's like, yeah, you know what? Maybe I am um, guilty of doing the same things that I and mad about and I, I do attribute a lot of that to wow being canceled and a lot of resentment about that but i just have to spread positivity now and then not engage in the same type of behavior that i criticize wow I so good for you go, guy you know i'm not gonna go attack mode anymore i, I don't think that there's, there's any value to that it's just gonna come back to me. Well, good for you man conversation man it's nice to it's nice to hear like a more human side of you outside of like you know what i see on twitter or rumble I actually do think this was a very valuable conversation, so I appreciate you taking. Wow! I really appreciate you taking the time to have a bit of a call with me about it. Yeah, this is and, wholesome uh, in the end. Mags, not clips. Yeah, from now on, bro. If you're gonna be talking about guns, get the terminology right. You very <laughs> much offended me with that one. <laughs> wow! What a cute ending. What? Wow. Very cute. All right, everybody. Well, we watched the whole fucking video. It was an hour and 15 minutes long, and we finished it. I know I skipped through some parts, but we fucking finished that video. And uh, that's pretty much it for today. So, um, yeah. Anyway, that's about it. Uh, see ya.